Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Bleed in Adobe InDesign. So I've got a document on screen here. It's got a dark background and some white text, and we can switch between the different views in InDesign by pressing W on the keyboard, that's the shortcut key. Or you can select these options in the bottom of the toolbar on the left, so we have Normal View, which shows the pasteboard and everything outside of your artwork. And then you can left click and hold on preview and you get a number of different options. You do get bleed listed as one, however we're going to use preview because switching between normal and preview shows the bleed anyway. So what is bleed? Well bleed is a printing term that describes the space that extends beyond the size of your artwork. So you see this red line here? This represents my bleed. And if you can see the very faint pink line that runs around the edge of my artwork, that is the trim size. So the trim size is the final size that my artwork is going to be. So this document here is an A4 sheet of paper, it's A4 sized. And if I zoom back into the bleed, you can see here we've got this space around the edge. Now three millimeters or five millimeters is pretty standard for small print items like business cards, brochures, flyers, booklets, leaflets. If you are printing larger format, your printer may ask for more bleed, but this is something that they would typically supply you with as part of a print spec. They would tell you how much bleed they would like. So you can specify the amount of bleed you would like when you create a new document. However, if you'd like to adjust that, just go to File, down to Document Setup, and you're presented with a similar screen to when you create a new document. So you can choose the page size, orientation, width, height, and then you can specify the bleed here. And you can have different amounts of bleed on different sides, but typically it's best just to have the same amount on all sides. So imagine that the printer is going to be printing my document here with my dark background and my light text. If they don't cut exactly along this trim line, so I'll press W now to switch back. So this is the trim view. This is how it will look when it's been cut. If the printer doesn't cut exactly on that line 100%, what's going to happen? They're going to get this white bit around the edge. And if you're doing a small print run, typically this is quite easy to avoid. However, if I was getting, say, 10,000 of this printed, when it's being cut and printed on machinery and guillotines, there is the chance that you get a slight bit of movement. So adding bleed allows for that movement. So what I would need to do is if I need to add five millimeters of bleed to this document, I just switch to normal view here and I can see my bleed line. I've set this at five millimeters all the way around the edge and I simply just have to select my background and extend this out to the edge. So for example, if I get the line tool and we'll just draw a colored line to illustrate this point. If this yellow line represents where my printer actually ends up cutting and they were to cut it here, so ever so slightly off. Rather than have a white background, as you can see here, I'd have like a white edge around part of it. Because we've added bleed and we've extended our background to the edge, it wouldn't be as noticeable. You wouldn't notice it to look at. It would be ever so slightly off technically, but the bleed would allow for that. So the only reason that we have to do this, so we can do this on the bottom right as well, just extend it all the way around, is because our background or our content or our design or whatever it is, touches the edge of the document. It touches that trim line. If I were to bring the document design in like this, we wouldn't need to add bleed because we're going to be printing on a white stock paper and nothing touches the edge. So we don't need to add that bleed. So if the printer does, again, cut it ever so slightly incorrectly, you're not going to notice. The same on this version here. So we've got a white background and we've got the text in the middle. Again, it's all on white. So there's no need to add bleed. So we can go back into File, Document Setup, and we can take the bleed out just because we don't need it. So we're left with just the trim line. However, if I were to go and add, let's say, a very light grey background. So let's just go and add very, very, very light background. 
in like this. We would then need to add bleed because it's not white and the paper is going to be white that we're printing on. So that's an instance where we would need the bleed back in. If I were to add, let's do something a little bit custom here. So we'll add something with a pen tool. So we're going to add a cool funky slope. Let's give this a color. <laughs> Looks absolutely awful, but imagine that's our design because this part here, this blue does touch the edge of the page, that trim line. What we're going to do is we are going to need to extend that so we can zoom in and we'll use the direct selection tool to select these anchor points and we'll just pull this shape out to the edge like so. So again, if the printer does cut it ever so slightly off and not 100%, then we've allowed for it with that bleed. And then when you go down to file and export, you can then specify the amount of bleed that you would like to export. Or you can select to just use whatever we specified in the document. So for this document, remember we've got five millimeters of bleed. And if I tick preview and reduce that to three millimeters, which is also commonly used, you can see the amount of bleed is reduced. And there we go. That's a little bit about bleed in Adobe InDesign. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.